What's up everyone, Dylan here. I wanted to hop on and do another episode of the weekly analysis video. As always, I'm going to be talking about some of the recent price action we've been seeing. And then going forward, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that I will look at going into the near future. I'll cover some bullish context we've been seeing as well as some bearish context as well. Uh, before I start the video, I wanted to just kind of go over some of the key events that are happening this week. Um, as early as tonight. So tonight there's a big event. Uh, it's the BOJ, Bank of Japan, has their rate decision tonight. It occurs at 11.43 p.m. Eastern Time. Yes, 11.43. I thought that was a typo. Uh, my question is who's picking the times over there? So uh, the key question for that rate decision are uh, the concerns of forward guidance uh, and then analysts are saying that the BOJ uh, likely signals a slow and gradual tightening bias for the coming quarter so um, basically there's you know analysts coming out saying what they believe will happen but uh, you know in plain English no one really knows what's going to happen so that could trigger some volatility overnight so uh, definitely keep an eye on that uh, going forward tomorrow, we have a 20-year bond auction uh, at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Wednesday, we have the Fed decision at 2 p.m., followed by Powell's press conference at 2.30 p.m. Thursday, jobless claims at 8.30 a.m., followed by S&P U.S. Services and Manufacturing PMI at 9.45. And then Friday, we have Powell speaking at the Fed Listens event at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Okay, so... Uh, in other words, this week has the ability or has the potential to be a uh, volatile one, okay? So uh, since the last video that I posted, um, uh, the S&P and the overall indices have been pretty flat, as you could see, right? They, you know, overall, they're, they're remaining resilient so far, uh, but we're not seeing as much of a vertical move it's kind of just a slow uh, grind sideways uh, per se um, since the last video I posted I took uh, an S&P short and I also took the Russell long I kind of went over the those two on uh, the last video um, you could see here in the discord I posted on March 8th I was short S&P at 5177 uh, there's a price discrepancy right now because that was using the March contract. So since then, we have rolled into the June contract, so the pricing is different. However, you could see that I posted that on March 8th. And if we zoom in a little bit, that was the day of what is now the all-time high. So this day right here was March 8th, which was a Friday. Okay, so um, I essentially got into a short on what is now seen as the all-time high. Uh, it was a very nice short, it made money, and then since then I had gotten stopped out, so I'm no longer in that. Um, but uh, I wanted to show you guys a longer picture, or, or larger picture, a daily chart of the S&P 500. We have this critical trend line that has acted as resistance uh, two times in the past, and then more recently, you could see, we continue to reject there, right? So um, clear resistance, right, from back here, right back in February 3rd of 2023, July 27, 2023, and then yet again, March 8th of this year. And then last week, it tested there a few more times on, on, on different days as well. So going forward, that key trend line is very, very important. We also have one on the NASDAQ um, that has also been acting as resistance as well. I'll draw that for you guys. Uh, where are we? Let's see. Right here. As you can see, uh, taking the September 13th, 2022 high, as well as um, the high from, say, July 18th, July 19th. And then you could see... Uh, just recently, we rejected there two more times, including March 8th. Um, I posted a more uh, thorough recap for the members. 
um, on March 10th, kind of going over why I took a short there. But those two trend lines are very, very important going forward, and they helped out the short that I took, okay? Going into the Russell, we had a very nasty failed breakout. I took this thing long as I mentioned I would in the last video that I did. Uh, I was up nicely uh, because it was working in you know the early part of the breakout and then you could clearly see here if we're looking at the daily chart, uh, that candle on March 8th um, ended up being a, a very bull or very bearish structure candle and since then from that high, the Russell is down, you know, about four and a half percent. So, um, you know, that one was no bueno. I stopped out of that one for a loss, but thanks to the S&P short, I was able to make money when you combine the one win and the one loss. So uh, that's the name of the game. Uh, but going forward, uh, this, this, you know, those areas on the S&P, the NASDAQ and the Russell are all going to be key areas going forward. Um, the Russell, if this thing does happen to break out in the next few weeks, months, I still will be looking at that breakout level um, because I do believe that, you know, uh, if other context aligns and you have the momentum that we want to see, uh, I do believe that, that that, you know, breakout over that resistance can be pretty powerful. So definitely keeping an eye on this going forward. Uh, that 2113 to 2120 area, um, you could clearly see, like I said, we, we've been failing there since February 3rd of 2023. So, um, you know, four, five, six tests there, and every single one has failed. So definitely a key area to look at. And I mentioned the last video, I said, if that thing can break above, you'll probably see some nice inflows into smaller cap names, such as GameStop and... Uh, you know other names so uh when that broke out uh, when that breakout happened uh you know gamestop looked good and and some of the other smaller cap names uh but since that failed that thesis is no longer valid so for the support in the small cap names you need to see russell break out of that resistance ideally that you know that's the ideal uh scenario uh, going over more resistance areas, we have value G, which is a nice, um, uh, you know, a lot of people don't look at this. Value G is essentially basically all of the names that are on the NYSE, uh, the New York Stock Exchange. Um, so it kind of gives you a really, really uh, broad picture as opposed to looking at, say, the, the tech heavy NASDAQ. Um, so you could clearly see this 608 level has been clear resistance from May of 2022. Uh, tested again in February 2023, and then yet again on March 8th, the day that I shorted the S&P. Um, so that's a very, very uh, important chart to look at going forward as well. So if you do see some nice you know, pressure uh, from the bull side going forward where you're seeing S&P breaking out, NASDAQ breaking out, um, Russell breaking out, so on and so forth, you want to ideally, if you're a bull, you want to see value G above that 608. Uh, and that would really show you that the uh, market is rallying on a very broad base where the market breadth is very healthy. So um, those key resistances so far um, have been, you know, really working. So definitely keep an eye on those in, in, in the future, uh, you know, in the near uh, future as well. We also have TNX. This was uh, pretty crazy, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so we had that breakdown that I talked about in the last couple videos. And now we're right back up to that top of the previous range, right? So the previous range was from 4.35% to 4.25% on the 10 year treasury note yield. We are back at that higher end, which could become a headwind for the market and that's kind of what we've been seeing especially with the s p the nasdaq the russell and value g you know failing at those resistance areas so the higher you have yields move the more of a pressure it puts on the s p um and the the overall market as a whole uh for that matter 
So if that thing breaks above 4.35%, you know, it can continue to put more and more pressure on the overall market. Now, if TNX rallies above 4.35, is it impossible for the S&P uh, to rally higher? No, because there are many other factors that move the market and influence the market. However, it will indeed put some additional pressure, um, you know, relative to if TNX was in a downtrend. Okay, so uh, definitely keep an eye on that going forward as well. Um, last week, we also had some hot U.S. inflationary data. We had the CPI, the PPI, and the import-export price. Uh, we had some upside numbers in those, along with a rise in the New York Fed inflation expectations as well. Uh, so those have been putting, uh, you know, a, a burden on the S&P as well, uh, you know, as the NASDAQ. Uh, but something that's very interesting is the fact that despite all of these things that I'm talking about that are technically headwinds and technically putting pressure on the market, um, the S&P is very resilient. I mean, there's there's really no argument there. So even though it's rejecting that, um, you know, that key trend line resistance as well as the NASDAQ, Russell, so on and so forth, the S&P is still technically making higher lows. So you really can't, um, you know, sit here and say, oh, the, the bears are in complete control. Because if you look at sole price action on this four hour chart, I would look at this and say, OK, despite it rejecting at that blue trend line a few different times, it still looks very bullish for, you know, clear higher lows. Right. You have a higher low here, higher low. Higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, so on and so forth. So, um, despite the inflationary data coming in hot and and those resistance areas getting hit, um, the bulls are staying resilient. So, very very near term, you want to look at this fifty percent retracement. Um, you know, using Friday's low and today's high, um, and you could see we're coming right down into there. So. Uh, very, very near term, you want to see the bulls defend there. That's 52.04. Um, if if price gets below, um, essentially you want the bears to then reject there and then move value lower. Uh, that's what you want to see if you're a bear. If you're a bull, you obviously want it to hold there and then kind of base um, and, and defend that 52.04, you know, plus or minus five, call it 5200 area. Um, as support very near term okay um, but the larger picture definitely keep an eye on those blue uh, resistances that I went over uh, including the value G as well um, let's see what else we got today we had news on Apple and Google uh, which was pretty interesting because those names have been relatively weak compared to some of the other tech names such as say Microsoft um, Meta Nvidia um, so Apple and Google have been on a downtrend. You could see over the last month, Apple's down 5%. Google is up 3%. But if you, you know, real, uh, combine the overall price action of like, say, Microsoft over the last three months, say 12%, Google is only up 8%. I mean, it's close, especially after today. But overall, Google and Apple, Apple and Tesla had been uh, relatively weak. Okay, so the news that came out on Apple and Google was that uh, there were there were talks that uh, Apple's future iPhones or products were going to be using Google's Gemini AI um, technology integrated within the Apple product. So uh, both names, uh, you know, found uh, some some nice up upside traction on that piece of news uh, Google was up as high as what was that uh, as high as you know caught seven percent at one point but um, these candles are very ugly is what I'm trying to get at so Google filled this gap uh, that it had from its earnings on January 30th and uh, it filled the gap today and it failed uh, right near there it couldn't sustain value above there for much Right, it, it, it couldn't even sustain for the first hour above that uh, gap fill and then retested there and then 
basically faded down ever since. Um, same deal with Apple. It looked really nice in the morning, and then it, it failed to sustain, and um, it, it, uh, it closed at a pretty nasty level. Going forward on Apple, I want to see how it reacts to this anchored VWAP. So if you anchor a VWAP down to the uh, 2023 lows, which are important um, because that was basically the low before it pushed high uh, to uh, new all-time highs, you want to see, you know, it acted as support. And then when price dropped below there, it became somewhat of a resistance area where the daily candles struggled to sustain above that. So now that we had that gap above today on the retest, right around that 172.9 area, you want to see if you're a bull, you want to see price defend there. And if it can't, it has more, um, you know, of uh, a chance to, to really fade, you know, much lower. So call it 172.9 plus or minus 50 cents. You want that general area to hold, and if it can't, uh, that's no good for um, overall market bulls, okay? We have Tesla. Uh, that was also very weak um, relative to the overall market over the last, say, month, right? Tesla's down 14%. Why? Uh, because of um, the electric car uh, demand, right? We had news out of Hertz. Um, and out of uh, Ford, right? A lot of different car manufacturers and, and rental agencies um, talked about um, the lack of demand for EVs, right? All these car manufacturers went ham in, in regards to manufacturing. And then now they have all of these cars that are just not being used and, and they're lowering prices, trying to you know, incentivize people to buy. So that's kind of why Tesla's down, uh, you know, amongst other reasons. But um, today had a nice day. It was up six and a quarter percent. It is back inside this trend, this parallel trend uh, channel that I have gone over in, in some of my videos. So uh, it'll be interesting if retest back down into this parallel channel can get bought uh, for potentially move back up to that 200 area. Um, I, I haven't touched this one. I'm just kind of showing you guys what I see. Um, uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about was this sentiment indicator. Uh, this is Goldman's equity positioning indicator. Uh, it has surged over the past week to the highest since March 2021. Basically, um, over 1.0 is stretched positioning. Um, extreme positions that are significant in predicting future returns, right? If you're looking at this bottom note. Um, so essentially, um, Goldman's, you know, indicator is showing that uh, a lot of folks are positioned to the long side in uh, equities, right? There's a uh, feeling of FOMO, right? Fear of missing out, uh, chasing recent highs, um, so this could also be a reasoning, you know, why as to why the S and P is kind of going sideways, kind of taking a breather. Um, that technically is a bearish indication, um, and it and it basically, uh, you know, basically tends to see a pullback leading, you know, or coming out of of out of that positioning uh, indicator. Um, you know, being that extreme and that stretched. Uh, but so that's why I, I kind of wanted to show you, uh, kind of look out for that. Um, the last thing I wanted to go over is NVIDIA and Bitcoin. Um, these two names, it's it's freaking weird. They, they, they correlate like crazy. Um, let me take, get rid of these. Um, if we add Bitcoin, uh, behind uh, this NVIDIA chart, you could see, right, let me uh, come over here. We'll make that a candlestick. We'll make it all black so you guys can distinguish. So Bitcoin's black, 
and then Nvidia is the one on top. But you could see that, um, you know, I'm trying to get okay. These two really correlate, you know, as of say, you know, even if you start later on in, in say July of 2022, when Bitcoin moves up, Nvidia does, and when Bitcoin moves sideways, Nvidia does, right? They basically broke out at the same time. Um, and it's pretty interesting because whenever you see a pretty sizable decline in Bitcoin, Nvidia tends to do the same and then vice versa. So basically this is what I'm saying. I'm gonna remove that. If we look at Bitcoin uh, on a weekly time frame, you can see that um, the previous high was 69,000. Oh, this is the market cap, my fault. Bitcoin. You can see that the previous high was 69,000. Okay. We broke above that, cleared it, right? Cleared it very nicely, got up to right around 74,000. And now it is looking like a fake breakout. Okay. Now, is Nvidia going to correlate with this in the future? Who knows? But as I just showed you on that, you know, that that overlay chart where the you can compare the two, it's pretty crazy how how, you know, similar they correlate. So, I thought it was uh worth noting. So, um, you know, if this if Bitcoin really fails at that previous high at 69,000 and fails to get back above there, uh, you know, technically could be setting up for maybe a test. I mean, this this could be a bold uh, prediction, but, you know, you never know. 56,150 would be my first target to the downside uh, using that Fibonacci retracement um, or even using this previous swing low from uh, March 5th, right? So if that does occur, it could take NVIDIA down with it. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy saying that, but um, we'll see. I also went over Clack on the last video um, saying that this tends to um, lead NVIDIA, kind of tends to precede what NVIDIA and other semiconductors do. And I showed you guys that trend line resistance. And when I made the video, it had not tested yet. So you could see clearly it did in fact test after I made that last video and it's worked almost flawlessly um, and it's come down. Uh, I did. I personally did not get into SMH puts as I said I was going to. Um, I just, I, I really, I mean, in hindsight, I should have because my indication of clack failing at that uh, nice trend line resistance worked and it did take SM, SMH down with it. Um, but uh, in plain English, I just, I didn't pull the trigger. So, um, you know, that's still on my watch list if they want to kind of come back, you know, into this uh, general area and, and retest maybe the 50% mark and then fail there. I would definitely consider getting into those SMH puts. But uh, like I said, in plain English, I have not done that. Um, NVIDIA had its uh, keynote meeting today. It's down, I think it's down like 18 bucks in, in after hours. And then tomorrow morning at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, NVIDIA is holding its analyst meeting as well. So there could be some uh, potential vol volatility there as well. Um, but we will see. Uh, but that's all I wanted to go over, right? Some bearish context, some bullish context, kind of give you an idea of what I will personally be looking at going into the near future. If you guys uh, like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, put some um, recommendations in the comments, feedback, whatever the hell you guys want to do. And um, that's about it. Peace.